Hello everyone, my name is Kate Ann Stryker, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about the global history of CSA on behalf of the Glenwood Center for Regional Food and Farming, the Hudson Valley CSA Coalition, and the CSA Innovation Network. I wanted to begin by framing why history matters. A key element in fighting for food sovereignty is to tell the whole story, to revisit the histories we have learned many of which are written with a colonial white supremacist lens, and to delve deeper, elevating the voices and perspectives of historically marginalized communities. To this end, the CSA Innovation Network has explored the history of CSA in the United States and globally, observing where credit has been predominantly given and where credit is long overdue. By no means is this a comprehensive history. I'm sure that there are stories left untold but we hope that this gives you a new vantage point from which to understand the system we all participate in. The dawn of CSA in the United States is most commonly attributed to Indian Line CSA and Temple Walton Community Farm, both founded in 1986. While these farms have played undeniably large roles in the popularization of CSA, they are not the first in the U.S. to have thought of the model nor is Europe the first place in the world to have established agricultural memberships. Booker T. Watley, a black author, horticulturist, and professor at Tuskegee University, identified 10 commandments he considered essential for successful farming in the 1960s and 70s. Included was the concept of a clientele membership club in which members paid an upfront fee to pick their own produce all season long. Now considered two separate farming models, CSA and Pick Your Own are foundational to many farms and are only becoming more popular as demand for fresh local food grows. As Watley was conducting research on intensive small-scale farming in the United States, CSA-like models were being independently established elsewhere in the world. In 1965, a group of Japanese women founded the Teike system. Teike built off of Japan's long history of economic cooperatives it also reflected growing national concern over food safety and chemical contamination in the wake of Minamata disease and gained additional momentum after the Chernobyl nuclear meltdown of 1986. Farming cooperatives remain very popular in Japan today, and the Japan Organic Agricultural Association elevates consumers and producers' shared commitment to safe and healthy food. Cooperative farm models began to take hold in Europe in the 1960s as well. Inspired by philosopher Rudolf Steiner's teaching on non-chemical agriculture and associative economics, Germans Karl August Loos and Trogger and Hans Kroh established a community land trust, Gemeinnützige Landbau Forschungsgesellschaft, in 1968. The land trust proposed a model they called agriculturally cooperating community, in which non-farming community members granted loans to farmers. In Geneva, Switzerland, farmers inspired by collective agriculture in Chile during the Allende administration founded a producer-consumer alliance called Les Jardins de Cocagne in 1978. By the 1980s, there were proto-CSAs developing across Germany and Switzerland. CSA traveled from Europe to the U.S. via Jan van der Tween, a Swiss biodynamic farmer, and Tolger Quo. Temple Wilton Farm was founded by Cole, Anthony Graham, and Lincoln Geiger in 1986. That same year, Van der Tween introduced the idea to Robin Van En, who founded Indian Line Farm and ultimately popularized the term community-supported agriculture. Urgency Honorary President Elizabeth Henderson founded Peacework Farm in 1989. The CSA model flourished throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, first in the U.S. and Europe, and ultimately across the globe. CSA goes by many names around the world and has no one founder, but universally the model has prioritized financial security and viability for farmers, robust and healthy soils, and safe chemical-free food for community members. As CSA continues to gain momentum, we must decolonize its history and celebrate the many thinkers who saw the benefit of cooperative economics and producer-consumer mutualisms. This, paired with a commitment to making CSA accessible to all members of our communities who want one, will bring us one step closer to food sovereignty. Thank you so much, and I look forward to answering your questions.